In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Immaculate Mary, seed of wisdom, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in the first reading from the letter to the Hebrews, we heard uh, a word of encouragement for those, for all of us really, who may falter in our fervor and in our uh, motivation to persevere in the struggle to be faithful to the word of God and to the commandments and to the love of our Lord. It often happens that uh, when a Christian goes through the metanoia experience, the experience of conversion, uh, we may be swept away uh, or swept along at the beginning with a, with a, on a wave of grace. Uh, I, I know, I've known of people who, uh, when you see them in the first fervor of their conversion, uh, it's, it's really wonderful, the enthusiasm that they have uh, for the faith, for God, for uh, the gratitude that they experience in being converted and saved and knowing this. But then often the Lord will withdraw some of that grace. In the beginning, they're just carried along by the force of, of God's love. And, uh, and, and as I said, it's like being swept away. But then the Lord knowing that we need to, uh, our, for our faith to be more than just a sentiment and more than just a, a passive uh, kind of faith, but we need to grow in that faith and struggle in virtue. And so some of the grace is withdrawn and we're allowed to feel our weakness. And when that happens often, uh, one may be tempted to discouragement, realizing that it's not so easy and that struggle may even be so unsuccessful in the beginning that uh, one may be tempted to question whether that, uh, that conversion experience was really true or was it just a, you know, a passing fancy or fantasy. And so the apostle in this letter to the Hebrews uh, gives a word of encouragement. He first he talks about uh, all of those challenges and trials that in the first fervor of conversion, the faithful experience. At times you were publicly, publicly exposed to abuse and affliction. At other times, you associated yourselves with those treated. You even joined in the sufferings of those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property. All of these things uh, in the first fervor of the conversion were fairly easy. And then he says, therefore do not throw away your confidence. It will have a great recompense. You need endurance to do the will of God and receive what he has promised. Today, we're celebrating the memorial of Saint Hyacinth of Marascotti a virgin member of the Third Order. And in her life, we have a, an example, a reflection of the virtue of constancy, that which is needed to get beyond the enthusiasm of the first uh, wave of conversion. St. Hyacintha was born in 1585 uh, to a wealthy family, an important family. Her father was a count and her mother a member of a, a princely Roman family, the Orsini. 
She had a sister uh, in the convent at Viterbo and was educated there. Then she experienced a setback. Uh, She was passed over, one could say, uh, when her parents arranged a marriage for her younger sister to the Marquis and St. Hyacintha, at that time called Clarice, she experienced a, a, a fury of rejection and became completely uh, impossible to deal with in her family. And so her parents, uh, in an attempt to deal with the situation, sent her to the convent and more or less forced her to become a nun, which she did, but with no real intention to live the life. And uh, being wealthy and privileged, she continued her life of, of privilege and comfort within the the convent and God gave her a grace. Uh, She fell mysteriously ill and uh, was even on her deathbed and so had to receive the sacraments in her cell. And when her uh, confessor then went to her cell and saw the incoherence of Uh, the comforts and many objects, frivolous, uh, examples of a frivolous uh, spirit, he rebuked her sharply. And that for her was uh, a wake-up call. She then uh, repented and did penance, went before her sisters uh, in the refectory with the cord, Uh, draped over her neck, a sign of penance, and begged forgiveness for the scandal that she had given them. Her repentance, you know, this this conversion experience of wanting to truly change and accept salvation was not a thing that was instantaneous and permanent. She struggled uh, and was tempted to fall back into her older ways And she fell sick again, and that for her was uh, the extra little push that she needed. She made an appeal to St. Catherine of Siena and then truly committed herself to living a life of penance and austerity and became an example of, of the virtue of penance. And then she became a saint uh, through applying herself Uh, with constancy to the acquiring of virtue. She was made the mistress of novices and uh, gave an example of great common sense. She wasn't necessarily uh, really flashy in her holiness, but preferred the simplicity of uh, that self-denial and became an example of holiness. And then after her death, many miracles were attributed to her. She died in 1640 on this day, January 30th, and uh, was later beatified and then canonized. And her life then is an example also in her life. We have an example of the kind of constancy to which we're called, to which the letter of the Hebrews uh, refers, that fidelity, do not throw away your recompense excuse me, do not throw away your confidence. It will have great recompense. Uh, St. Hyacinth uh, exemplified the virtue of constancy, which is an ally to the moral virtue of fortitude or strength. And uh, Adolf Tanqueray, in his, in the manual on spiritual theology, talks about this virtue and how uh, we have to persevere and struggle against our weakness. And when we run into these uh, difficulties, we have to pray that perseverance is a gift from God obtained by prayer. So we must ask insistently from our Lord this grace 
of perseverance unto death. And when we begin to falter, instead of looking at our sufferings, we have to look at that eternal reward which is promised to us and which we, uh, with confidence, know that we will obtain if we just remain faithful. We pray today through the intercession of St. Hyacinth, Virgin, and member of the Third Order, for the grace of constancy to remain faithful to our path and look always at the goal, the eternal reward that awaits us. Blessed be Jesus and Mary. Yeah.